okay, I'm going to show you this testimony of hell. Someone supposedly saw the judgment seat and saw hell. And I wanted to come out and do a video on this because I've been seeing this video being you know, shared by different people, uh, various YouTube channels, professing Christian YouTube channels, um, where it's just another one of these false visions, these false dreams of seeing the judgment, seeing hell. And uh, again, you know, it's just one of these false dreamers. And, you know, the dreams and visions are not for Gentile Christians today. Uh, let me show you that from scripture. Okay. Because uh, they'll say, and really the whole point of these dreams is to take you away from the scriptures and towards them. It's putting the words of men above the scriptures. But, of course, the verse talks about dreams, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. You know, verse 17, And shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons shall and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see vision, shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Last days. Okay? The end times before the second coming, not for Gentile Christians today. And the prophet Joel, it's quoting Joel chapter two, verses twenty eight. Uh, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Okay? It's about the second coming, events prior to the second coming, not for Gentile Christians today. That's what the context of Joel chapter 2. So, uh, these false dreams and visions is to get you under bondage. It's And a lot of these dreams and visions teach a workspace salvation. Christians, you know, Christians... Are in hell because maybe they did a certain sin or maybe they didn't you know post something wrong on facebook you'll mention that but uh it's work salvation all these dreams and vision people who claim they have these dreams and visions all teach a workspace gospel that you have to stop sinning to be saved okay you can't stop sinning to be saved okay turning stopping your sin is a work let me show you that joel sorry not, not joel jonah chapter 3 and verse 10 okay turning from sin is work salvation Okay, when you repent of sin, repenting is when you have godly sorrow for your sin. It's not you having to stop your sin and stop sinning to be saved. Okay, Joel, Jonah chapter three verse ten, and God saw their works that they turned from their evil way, they turned from their sin, and God repented of the evil that He said He would do unto them, and He did it not. So turning from your evil way is works. Okay, having godly sorrow for your sins is not works, which is biblical repentance in the context of salvation. Okay, but all these guys teach the gospel, you have to stop sinning to be saved. So, it's false. And it's funny too, because a lot of these hell testimonies are, are always different. They, they never line up with, not only do they not line up with the scriptures, they don't even line up with each other. All these hell testimonies are like different from each other. It's like they never line up. It just shows either they're making it up or it's some kind of demonic influence, which I think is more likely the demonic influence. So, uh, but I just find it funny because all these you listen to all these different hell testimonies all of them give a different description of what hell is like They don't add up with the scriptures and they don't even add up with each other Just found that interesting But in this video you're gonna see all this dramatic music and all this other stuff and you know this this voice acting and everything uh, It's mind control and to get you away from the scriptures and towards the traditions of men. So let's, let's get right into this The most traumatizing and awakening day of my life I remember it was on a Thursday. Matter of fact, let's take it back. Wednesday night, I found myself looking at these different YouTube clips and watching different out-of-body experiences and different films that, you know, they used to scare me. And I would watch it and it would blow me away. It would catch my attention. And it used to scare me so bad. That yeah, it was funny. They the mention they showed a picture of this hell testimony by... What, what was her name again? I'm trying to find the clip again. Uh, Mary Kay Baxter. Yeah, I've heard of her testimony too. Uh, she's a wing nut. She's a charismatic wing nut. So she also teaches a workspace salvation too. So not surprising they're referencing her testimony. And they got this graven image of Jesus Christ on there as well. This false image. Acts 17, 29 condemns images of the Godhead. So already problems right there. And it used to scare me so bad. I will, I will wonder. I will... My mind used to go in places like, God, is this stuff real? You know? Now, I'm going to point something out too. He said he was watching videos of hell testimonies and, and it was scaring him. Well, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 5.3 that basically what you dream about, what you think about, sorry, what you think about, what you, you know, watch and stuff can affect your dreams. 
Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 3. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by the by a multitude of words. Your dream comes through the multitude of business. What you think about, what you focus on during the day. So if you're if you're you're busy binge watching these health testimonies, you know, you're probably gonna have a dream about that. You know, because your dream comes through the multitude of business. When you're spending your business watching these health testimonies, you're pretty likely pretty likely gonna have a dream about it. But then claim, oh, it's from God or whatever. No. So yeah, he was watching his hell testimonies, and he's having he had a dream as a result of that because Ecclesiastes five three, a dream coming through the multitude of business. So, already a problem right there. When you just binge watching these hell testimonies, you're gonna have a dream about it. That's just how the Bible says. Uh, it's not from God. It's just from either demonic influence or just, you know, probably drugs or whatever, or just your own imagination. I couldn't understand it because I, I've never been to that place. So um. I found myself um, praying. I, I remember walking outside of, of my apartment and I was walking back and forth with my eyes closed and just started praying. And I asked God, I said, Lord, if you give me an out of body experience, you know, I, I vowed to share your word and to tell the people what I saw. You know, um, not expecting that God was gonna respond back to that because I was just praying out. I was just praying, you know, uh, not actually looking for a response. And after that night, the next morning, that Thursday, October the 2nd, I had a dream. And my spirit left my body. It was like I was in my apartment and my spirit got pulled out of my body. And I would go in these different transits, um, bright color lights that was white. She like, the best way I can explain it would be shoo, 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 all the different flashing lights. And I appeared before a blue sky with no clouds. Uh, it was like a blue place. No land, no trees, no grass, no... Uh, chapter and verse for that? Where's that in scripture? You know, we're going to see what he says. What he says is not anywhere in scripture. See, again, what's the standard? The standard is the word of God. So if your testimony, your so-called testimony, is not lining up with the scriptures, you know, it's false. So um, where in scripture there is there this blue light and everything like that? You know, it's not in there. No water, nothing. There was nothing there but a blue atmosphere. And I would see this atmosphere goes millions of miles upon millions of miles where nothing existed. It was like nothing was hidden. Everything was real. Everything was before your eyes. You could see. Okay. We- Let me show what the Word of God says. Okay. Oops. Hit Microsoft Word. Sorry about that. Hit the wrong button. Revelation chapter 20. This is the Great White Throne Judgment. This is after the thousand year reign of Christ. Uh, Sorry, not verse 5. It is verse 11. Sorry. This is the biblical description of the the Great White Throne Judgment. uh, Revelation 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, uh, from whose face, from the earth, from sorry, face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was op- book was open, which is which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So the lost people are judged according to their works, not saved people. Saved people get rewards according to their works at the judgment seat of Christ. Not the same thing as the great white throne judgment. Okay? You're not judged according to your works. You're rewarded according to your works. If you're saved at the, the judgment seat of Christ, then lost people at the great white throne judgment, which is not the same event, they're judged according to their works. So I just wanted to clarify that because these, again, these hell testimonies teach a works-based salvation. Uh, verse three or verse thirteen, and the sea gave up their gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Um, where is there any mention of this blue light that you know expands millions upon millions of miles? Where is that anywhere in this text? We don't see that. So what are you going to believe? The scriptures or his testimony? I'm going to follow the scriptures. So let's continue. Who was in this? clear kind of body form some form of light as a, you would refer to a soul or a spirit or, or and, and I could see through it was so transparent and in front of me was thousands among thousands similar to what I was 
and thousands among thousands behind me. And, and I knew that it was some form of a soul. And in the middle of my chest were seeds, multiple seeds. I didn't know what they were for. And I realized that I was the only- Again, where is that in scripture? Where are there seeds inside of you at the, you know, at the judgment seat? I mean, seriously, who believes this? If you actually understand your scriptures on um, what Revelation 20, verse 11 to 15 says about the judgment, where is there anything about seeds mentioned in, in people's chests? I mean, seriously, who believes this stuff? Only being they could actually move out of my place and look and observe, smell, taste, you know, feel. All my senses were active at this point. And so, you know, um, I began to look around and, and, and to observe the things that I saw, not knowing that this was a dream. I thought this was reality. I thought this was actually happening, you know. Um, and I looked forward, and there was this great shadow way in front of me, way at the end of the line. It was like thousands and thousands of people in front of me, and there was a shadow, a great big shadow, but it had no detail. It was like a, as a vapor. And I could, I could see that it was a shadow of something that was in the front. And, um, I, you know, I had many questions at this point in this dream. And out of nowhere, I, I, hear, I heard these words, depart from me. And this galaxy, this portal, I don't know what to call it. On the, on, on the right side of, of God, you know, uh, or Jesus Christ, you know, whoever you, you, you decide to identify that spot of judgment. On the right side of him, there was this big portal that opened up. Boom. And there will be stones of fire. It, normally, when you, you you get a lighter and you cut it on, try to um, spark a flame, but instead of fire, it was stones, and they will leak out of this portal. And whoever whoever that guy said the fuck me flew down this place, and it, the flames, the, the stones were so hot that it would burn everybody outside of that portal on the left side of our, our body or our form it will burn us and it would, everybody would be like whoo like as if it was so cold or so hot you would tell somebody to close that door it's too cold that's how hot it was and the, the portal closed and then the, he, he sent them so fast that the screams were late i would hear ah like it was like the part for me and it closed up then the screams come and it terrified me. And then out of nowhere, something snatched us up. And like we moved up the line. And I began to think, I, I didn't understand where we was. I'm like, oh my God, maybe this is judgment. Again, where is this at in scripture? You know, chapter and verse for any of this, please. Yeah, my, you know, I had many questions and I would hear, depart me, depart me, depart me. And all these different people will be sent to hell. I know uh, if it's a judgment, they're sent to the lake of fire. The lake of fire comes after hell. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Let me share that verse again. Uh, ver uh, verse 14, Revelation 20, verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So the, the, the dead, they come out of hell up to the great white throne judgment, and then they're cast into the lake of fire. Not the same thing. The part that scared me the most was... The people that were getting judged, you could hear when God was talking to them. And you could hear everything they got judged from. So if somebody went to hell for something that you knew you struggled with in your life, you knew where you were going. And so I'm just saying people go, shoot, sit there, boo, boo. And I'm seeing the flame and it's just constantly burning everybody outside that haven't been judged yet. And I could hear some of the people, um, talking to God and um, I remember there was a woman you know blonde hair and God was talking to her he said I'm not judging you for what you put on Facebook but I'm not, not, not. notice the works the works based salvation there notice this watch this judging you on how everybody else received it 300,000 people were led astray by one of her Facebook posts and he said their blood was on her head it's quoting Ezekiel 3.20. Um, who is that written to? Who is Ezekiel 3.24? Jews under the law. Okay, let me show you that. This is, for people, this is also for people who don't believe in uh, dispensational salvation. The heretics out there who don't believe in dispensational salvation. Ezekiel 3, I'll start at verse 18. 
Okay. Um, Ezekiel 3.18 When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness, and commit iniquity, and lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Verse 21. Nevertheless, if thou warn, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, uh, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned, and thou hast delivered thy soul. Um, again, what do you have here? A righteous man who is turning from his righteousness and committing iniquity, and he's dying in his sin. And notice too, you know, how the wicked man has to turn from his wickedness, or also die in his iniquity. Again, Jonah 3.10, turning from your sin is works. So, they're having to, to turn from their sin, do works, to deliver their soul. Okay, Works salvation in the Old Testament. Again, this is to Jews under the law. This is not for Christians today. But again, this is a good passage to use against those who, the heretics, who think that salvation has always been by faith. But again, who is it written to? Jews under the law, not for Christians. So, continuing. I don't know what he said to bother me, and I'm talking about, I couldn't express how powerful his words were. It's as if he said to bother me, and everything shook. And she was like, she was sitting with great force. And the portal opened up, boom. She was going to fly, and it would close. And like, ah, the screams were so late, it terrified me. People, uh, adultery, uh, 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 fornication, of uh, so many different things that I could actually hear. And people in front of me were terrified because a, a lot of those people were struggling or went through the same situation and they never repented. So I, thousand, one thousand, sent here, sent here. They would go, they were flying, they was flying so fast. I've never seen something so fast. And it got to the point where I was next in line. And he called me up. And he started talking to me. And keep in mind that our life held, held us hand to hand. So anything we did in our life, our, our life testified against us. So you couldn't lie because your life testified. Say, Again. Yeah. If you're saved, you're eternally secure. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.13, Ephesians 4.30, and 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. Okay? If you're saved, the sin you do, you'll get chastened for it. You'll receive chastening. Let me show you that. The scriptures talk about chastening. But you don't lose your salvation. Okay? Uh, again, conditional security is a satanic heresy. People, Anyone says you can lose your salvation, they're lost. That's simple. Uh, I make no bones about it. They're lost. Um... Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 to 12. My son, despise not, chasten, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. For whom the, Lord, whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as the father the son, the son in whom he delighteth. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12, 5 to 8. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 to 8. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as... So you as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons, as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? I'm not good at reading on a computer, I do apologize. For if ye be without chastisement, whereof all, all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Okay. Uh, I think that was the verse I wanted to read. But basically, what's going on? Uh, when you're living in sin, God will chase you. Some more scripture on that is 1 Corinthians 11, 28 to 31. But let a man examine, sorry, verse 28 to 32, sorry. But let a man examine himself, so and so so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now when it says eateth and drinketh damnation, it's not them losing their salvation. It's in the sense of the chasing of God leads to their life being wrecked. They're going to have a really bad life. That's what it means to eat and drink and damnation. Not every mention of damnation is a reference to hell. Not discerning the Lord's body. Uh, verse 30. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, 
and many sleep. Notice how he says, among you. Okay, Paul is talking to saved Christians. He says, among you. Many are weak and sickly. Okay, people are being chastened and they're, they're losing their health. They're losing their, their strength. And it says, in many sleep. God, we, some of them are even killed. God will even kill a Christian who's living too much in sin and just rejecting chast chastening. And if they get too far in sin, God will kill them. So, and many sleep. And they're weak and sickly. So there's chastening going. You can lose your health. You can lose your strength. You can lose your, your mental joy. You can lose your rewards. And you can even lose your life if it gets too far. That's simple. Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But look at verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not, we should not be condemned with the world. You're not condemned with the world. Another verse of scripture on that. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 5. To deliver such as one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So if a Christian gets too far into sin, then they can be delivered unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, but the spirit is still saved. So they go home, that God just takes him home early. That simple. And some more scripture on that is... Uh, 1 Timothy 1.20, of whom is, and this is a common verse, they try to say is, you know, prove you can lose your salvation. The conditional security heretics, the Catholics, conditional security Catholics, because uh, conditional security is a Catholic heresy. That's simple. Here's a verse they like to use to say, oh, you can lose your salvation. Uh, 1 Timothy 1.20, of whom is Hymenaeus, actually I'll start at verse 19. Holding faith, uh, 1 Timothy 1.19, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning the faith have made shipwreck. And when it says made shipwreck, it's not saying you've lost your salvation. It's just saying you've wrecked your life by living in sin. And then verse 20 confirms that. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So they delivered unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the Lord Jesus. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. 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 Sorry. He was chastening them, and it, get, it got so bad, he had, to, he had to deliver them unto Satan. So the spirit would be saved, but the flesh would be destroyed. So not talking about you losing your salvation. It's talking about chastening. You can't lose your salvation for anything. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Again, Ephesians 1.13, Ephesians 4.30, and 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. And there's other scriptures too, like John chapter 10, verse 28 and 29. You know, Jesus says, you can't be plucked out of God's hand. You'll never perish. Uh, John 5.24, you shall not come into condemnation. Uh, so many scriptures. Uh, John 6, I think John chapter 6, verse 39, I think it is. Just want to make sure I got the right verse. John 6. Uh, not, uh, yeah, John 6, 39. Uh, and this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all of which, sorry, that all of which, sorry, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. When you're saved, you won't be lost. Jesus Christ will not lose you. Uh, there's First Peter chapter one verses three to five it says you're kept by the power of God. You have a place in heaven reserved unto you. You can't be, you can't lose your salvation. Anyone who says you can lose your salvation, they're lost. Again, they're not saved. They're teaching work salvation. So, I'm gonna play a little bit more of this. Yes, you did. You did this. You did this at this time. Yes, you did. And whenever God would speak to me, you would see a big screen, like you would see. As if whatever God says, it comes to life. Big screen, yeah. Again, where is this at in Scripture? He hasn't quoted any scripture. He's saying, okay, the Bible says this here. You know, turning the Bibles to this chapter and verse. You know, it's all his imaginations or demonic influence, which again, I think is the more likely scenario. And so um, he started talking to me and he started telling me everything that I could have did better. And, and at this point, you know, I'm like, okay, God, you know, could this better? I did it, you know, I did okay with it, but I could have did better. So he began to say other things and he brought up this specific woman and he asked me why didn't I forgive her? And he gave me her specific name, I'm not gonna say it, he gave me her specific name and I knew exactly what he was talking about. He asked me why didn't I forgive her? I said, I did God, I did forgive her. And, and then said, of course, you, you know, of course the thing of Matthew 6, you know, if you don't, you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Again, who is who is Matthew chapter? Who is the Sermon on the Mount for? Matthew chapter five to seven. Who, what's the Sermon on the Mount for? It's not written to Christians. It's for the millennial kingdom. Okay, but here's a verse. I'll just end it off with this because uh, I have to quit. I have to close it down. But I'll end it off with this verse right here, just to remind you that you shouldn't believe these false dreams and visions. 
Jeremiah thir- or 23 and verse 32. Here's a good verse to use against these false dreamers. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies, and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. Don't believe these false visions. Don't be deceived by them. Okay? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.